and the journey of RPG awesomeness continues. We're going to further build out the animations and make sure they're working for our characters and the interactions. If you're confused, you need to go back and watch the other parts of this video. Keep in mind, all the assets, the code, and all of that is in the description for you to use and abuse and make awesome things out of. And yeah, we're going to keep going. Let's uh, dive right in. At this point, we have a good amount of code already set up. We have animations ready to go. And we can see over here in the inspect panel all of the details, all of the stats that we have yet to fill in. Now, what we're going to do, how we're about to go, how we're going to go about that, well, for instance, and so some of the adjustments we made had uh, kicked out the info that was already in there. So let's go ahead choop, and choop, face icon, just in case we do want to make an adjustment to that icon uh, upon death or upon loading. I'll do this the easy way and go to sprites. Oh, yep, there it is. Boom. So there's that face icon. Yep, wizard, that should be good, that should be good. Animator, so now we need to pick this. What's our animator? Well, it's the wizard hero animator. What's the magic fill? Or what's the health fill? And we can also just, of course, hero health fill. Boop. Hero magic fill. Boop. And there we are. Let's go ahead and save all of this. Ooh, where is it? I usually, oh, I'm on edit. I usually just hit control S for save, but I like to do things visually for videos. All right, and now let's work on our friend the giant. So we already got fighter here, which is great. Let's go ahead and do the melee prefab, which, oh, our giant doesn't have. So move and move, and here we are. And now we can change these up to fit with what we want for our giant. So the melee attack for the giant, I don't think will cost any magic. The attack multiplier, well, he's big, so 0.5. 1.2 maybe defense up to a 1.5 or starts at a 1.5 the range attack let's actually make this for the giant let's make this five magic and maybe the range attack doesn't look like it's magic we'll check out when we do the animation and it's up to you you could have both the range and the melee attack not be magic so five magic minimum multiplier we're going to say the attack multiplier is going to be weaker so less than up to one and then defense 0.4 to one sure okay and then oh the owner that's important who's our owner actually what am i doing let me just do this owner is the enemy giant enemy giant let's make sure i got that here i did not and then we also do need to fill in i guess this information was blanked out so range we'll say that and i'm going to make the range attack magical and melee Mac, uh, no magic for the melee attack on that. And sure, those are my stats. I'm going to hit Control S to save all this. And animator, yep, yep, yep. Attack stats, trans, oops. Yep, and e And now we need to create the prefabs for our, uh, or the animations for our characters. So let me see what we have for wizard. Wizard we do have all ready to rock. And that means we should go ahead and do giant the giant animations create animator controller we go idle first and i'm going to use this non edited one it looks like hmm, maybe to here we do want it in the sprite render. Stretch that out to 50. Let me grab game window. And preview. Oh yeah, I am liking that. We could slow it down a bit, but I really like that. So now let's go ahead and click here, create new. So it looks like up to here. I'm going to hold shift so I can grab all of them. And try. Yeah, perfect. I like that. And now range. And we'll say this is a range attack because he hits the ground so hard, you know, everyone shakes. And it looks like it involves magic because of the color. So we could make this cost magic, which is good because we did. <laughs> cool. I like that a lot. All right. And then we need the damage. And since these are shorter, I'm just going to repeat that last frame. Let's drag it out about there and take a look. 
Mm -hmm. Great. Great, great, great. I'm going to drag game back up here. And now let's make sure we got this animator set up. So I went to animator. You might have to go to window animation animator. And we're just going to make sure all of our animations are connected. Okay. So with this, idle is our primary animation right now, which is good. That's what we want. But we want to have these connected. And this is a way you can avoid actually doing some coding because you can use this instead. So idle, we want the user to be able to go from idle. Oh, so uh, what we actually need is this way. You want melee, once we trigger that animation, to be able to go back to idle. Same with damage, same with range. Okay. And then let's take a look at our animations because we do want to be able to loop the idle attack. Where, oh, and that's all set. These other ones you don't need to loop, so we want to take those off of loop. Okay, and now let's do the same for our wizard character. Yep, so I'm just going to kind of finagle these around. We just want to make sure they're connected up. So this can make a transition back. That way, when we trigger the animation because of an attack or something like that, it will automatically go back to the default animation on its own. Now for the wizard, let's look. Idle should loop. We don't need melee to loop. Great, I'm going to hit Control S to save all of this. And then let's take a look at the giant. And let's go ahead and put in our prefabs here. And then our face icon. Face icon was the sprite. And then let's just double check the wizard hero. We have all this in. Great. To see where we're at, let's hit play and see what errors pop up. Okay, oh, and now you can see our idle animations though. Unsigned expectation. The variable health and fighter stats has not been assigned. Got it. Let's double check this. Where are we? Oh yeah, animator. Enemy health, which would be that, which is also here. Enemy magic fill, I guess I'll do first. Enemy health fill, I'll do next. Boom, let's go that out. Let's try. Okay, so we got new errors now, and this is upon clicking the button. Yes, so these make sense. When we click on the button, we get an error. And that's because, well, there's a few things we gotta fix here. We need to go ahead and add in. We have game object here, we have game object enemy. The computer doesn't know what the heck they are though. They're not equal to anything. We didn't use serialize field. So let's start there and use a start statement. And I'm just gonna do hero is gonna be equal to game object, which is gonna be capitalized because we're gonna do a find object with tag and the tag is gonna be hero. I'm going to do basically the same thing for enemy. So I'm going to do a control C, control V, and just switch this over to enemy. And we want to find someone with the tag, well, enemy. So that should be squared away. We should get those set. And now for this, melee attack, range attack. We have defined this separately as a private and also serialize the field. I'm going to stick with the easier one instead of going through it with private. So I'm just going to get rid of these two private variables. We're not going to need them. And instead of having melee attack down here, I'm going to have melee fab. And same with range. And that should do it. Okay. And while we're at it, let's save all that. Let me head back over here. Oh, I should hit pause or stop. There we are. I'm going to clear this out. Let's give these unique names, the wizard melee. So I'm just going to say W melee. Okay. Just so we know. W range. E melee for enemy and E range. All right, and let's hit play now. And nothing, which on one hand means no errors. Let's look into then why or what the next step is to make sure we do have some action taking place. Let's take a look at our wizard real quick. We got all of that lined up perfectly. That's looking good, good, and our tag's hero. Awesome. So let's head then over to the code and take a look there. All right, so what we need to do is uncomment this. And it's gonna be definitely a few mistakes. I remember what we left open. There we go. So now, oh yeah, uh, this is C-sharp. That's not where an equal sign would go. Greater than or equal to, yes. Update mana doesn't exist yet. Attacker stats dot attack. Uh, attacker stats dot melee, let's see, multiplier times. Yeah, we want melee for an attack. And then 
if magic attack, we want the If it's a magic attack, we're going to want the magic change. So merely, let's say, magic range. Okay, so because magic attacks are going to be range attacks, so magic range is what we're going to switch that over to, and that's fine, because now we can go ahead and do, if magic attack, instead of just magic to make it more clear, this would be a magic range attack. And I'm just going to control C, control V. Control V. So what would we do? Oh, and then we would use the magic range multiplier. Here, though, we want magic. This is how much magic the user has. So we're going to take how much magic the user has and take away cost from that. Let's now also go ahead and animate the health and mana bars. So for that, we're going to need to go back into stats here. And we have update magic fill. Hmm, what's going on then? Update. Ah magic fill. There we are. And keep in mind, what I just did is since our magic attacks have tended to be range attacks, I said, okay, if it's a magic attack, that's when we're going to use our magic slash range multiplier. So switching over that idea from purely magic to the magic range multiplier, which is within the fighter stat. So you could just do a special range attack or a special magic attack. Either would work there. You just want to have the multiplier for what you need. All right. Let's save all this. Double check. All right, let's try this out. Oop. Play. That went pretty well. Wait a minute, what happened over here? Oh, so that animation's messed up. Let's try this. That looks all right. Notice how the magic is being impacted and the health. It shouldn't be like that. So let's start there. Uh, the enemy health fill, what you want to do to fix this is we're going to start them all from the left side. And then when they're starting from the left side, you don't want their pivot to be in the middle. You want it to be on the far side like this. Magic fill will be the same. Great. And now for hero. All zeros over here. Oh, I mean, we went zeros for pivot. Getting ahead of myself. Okay. That should take care of that. Let's look at our enemies animations. And animation. Nope. Animator. All right. So it looked like the damage attack was not the correct one. I'm going to hit delete on this. Let's double check. I want to watch this, so I'm going to double click, and then I need the game window out here. Try it. And oh, where is damage? Interesting. So it looks like our damage attack didn't save, or oh, here it is right here, though. Yeah, we're going to replace it. Okay, and then let's head over to our sprite sheets. And these last four. The the damage one, sprite renderer. I'm going to repeat just one of them. Let's grab this. I'm going to put it out over 43. Let's check this out. <laughs> I like that. We can slow it down a bit if we want. Maybe this. To make sure they can see that the character has taken damage. Okay, so that's looking good. That should be set up now. Let's double check and make sure animator. Okay, here's our new damage. And we just want to do cre make transition. Boom. All right. So that should help out with that. Idle is the main one. It's just stuck on what we just did. All right, let's go ahead and see. Boom. <laughs> and let's say, bam. Notice that I used magic that time and bam. So the magic's working really well. It looks like our health isn't going down. Let's see if we put in the code for that yet. Defense multiplier, that would be within step. So if health is less than equal to zero, you're dead. Else, hmm, well, this is all looking good. We haven't put in the match controller, so the enemy doesn't get turned yet. But let's see a Where's our wizard. Give me a melee. Magic class, that's fine. It's okay. So let's make sure. Uh Oh, whoops. Range should not be that. All right. So I'm going to do 15 for range. And for melee, just for now, actually, here. I want to make sure this is working. Let's do 25. All right. Ah, there we go. And we can see the magic also go away because we made it expensive. Yes. Apparently, we're spending 30 magic points for each move. 
Awesome. Okay, so now we need a bit of a match controller, an overseer of the game to make sure that the enemy gets a turn two. We're getting pretty close. We're going to want to attach that to just some object to nothingness, basically. So I'm going to create... Oh, not under camera. Let me delete that. And just game object, create empty, and I'm going to call it... You can call it game controller, too, if you want. Um, and I call it object just to keep track of it. Because then we're going to add script, new script, game controller. And let's go over to our project and our assets. Here's game controller. Let's just put it in scripts and game controller. Let's open up. All right, this is a pretty critical component and is going to make sure that we are actually a fighting game and not just a beating up the computer game. All right, so we want to use system.collections.generic for this. All right, and let's do a private list of fighter stats. This will help. It, all, also, it will help us with our game, but it also helps if you want to grow and expand this game to have multiple fighters at the same time. There's that. We will use start. Let's actually first though serialize fields. So battle menu is the option menu to make the player attack. And then for start, Oops, this shouldn't be hero. Oh, yes, I should. Skip the line. So what we're going to be doing with this is figuring out who goes first by the rate of speed that they have. Right? And I'll let me get this in here and we can go through it together. All right, so let's talk about this. So calculate next turn is obviously coming from fighter stats. What is fighter stats? Fighter stats, fighter stats. So it's going to be within here. We haven't done it yet, and we'll get there in just a moment. And it's going to be using the fighter stats, their speed, to figure out whose turn is next. Add, um, and then we're creating a list, fighter stats list, right? 
and we're adding both of them to it and then we're sorting it based on speed to know who will be going first so that's what this code is doing find object with tag enemy and then this next turn well it's going to be making that decision to some degree at least um, not making the decision it's going to be starting the next turn and commanding action according to whose turn it will be so if and So if game object find game object with tag enemy, so what that says is if not, that's checking for an existence. This is really good for debugging because what we're going to actually use is from the current fighter stats again, and it's going to be their current new. No. And we're going to check if they're dead. And this is grumpy because we haven't told it what current fighter stats is. What it's going to be, though, is going to be the first person in that list, which should be the fastest. So game object, current. So the person at the zero index of our current fighter stats list. Yes. Except, of course, this isn't an object. It is a fighter stats object because it is a list. Zero index is the first person in our list. Then we want to say current fighter stats. We don't have dead yet, which is why that's as is. Let's go ahead and do fighter stats. Stat. Remove current fighter stats. So we're just removing the fighter from our list if they're going to be going up or if we're going to be calculating whose turn it is. Let's also add get dead while we're at this. That's within fighter stats. All it does is dead is false right here. We need a function that's called, well, shockingly get dead. Um, let me actually, let me keep compare down at the bottom. And oh, public bool, it shouldn't be a void. All it's going to be doing is return the status of the fighter. Okay. And so as long as the explanation point, which should be right here, means that that fighter is not dead. So as long as they are not dead, what are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to set up a game object to be equal to the, our current unit. Not just the fighter stats, the unit. And this we haven't set up yet, the calculate next turn function. Turn, that is looking good. And then we're going to want to sort them. Okay, so what's happening here? Game object, we're grabbing the game object of our current unit. We're saying, hey, our current fighting stats, current fighter stats, right, the one at the zero index, calculate the next turn of this person using the current fighter stats next turn function. Fighter stats add current fighter stats. So what is fighter stats? Well, fighter stats is our original up here list. So remove, we removed the fighter stats for the person we're calculating now, and we are adding them back. Once we add them back, so we've recalculated whose turn it is, we add them back, and then we sort the list accordingly. And the list will sort according to speed because of our uh, because of our functions over here that are implementing not just compare to, but the next act turn is what it's going to focus on. Now let's actually switch gears or kind of stay in the same gear, gear instead of a calculate next turn. And this is going to be going in well fighter stats. Let's throw it here under dead. And we're going to take a look at the current turn and say next act turn is going to be equal to the current turn plus math f. And that seal turn means round up to an integer, but the ceiling of it, so round up. Oh. Okay. And that's all we should need here. Before I forget, I'm going to hit save. Let's go back to game controller. 
current fighter stats. Not fighters. All right. And then after we sort, we want to figure out whose turn it is. So we just sorted them. We recalculated speeds. Whose turn is it? So if current unit is going to be dot tag is equal to equal to hero, well, then it's our hero's turn, right? And then what would we do? Well, this dot battle menu. The reason I'm doing this is we're hiding the battle menu so the user, the player, doesn't try to click attack 10 times right at the same second, right? That's somewhat cheating. We don't want the computer to respond to that. So we're just going to hide the menu to make it unclickable. And then we want an else. And what's else going to be? Well, if they're not the hero, int, they're the enemy. So we're going to do a string attack type. This is a shorthanded if statement. And what I mean by that is what this is really saying is if random range is equal to one, then this word, the string is melee, otherwise it's range. So that's just deciding on the enemy's attack. Sometimes it will be melee, sometimes it will be range. And a random goes from zero to one below the top value. So this number will either be zero or one, and that is the only numbers it will be. Okay, and then once they we have it and it has we do need to do current unit dot it because the enemy would be the current unit. We assign current unit unit to whoever's turn it is. Fighter dot action. And then we'll need to select the attack. And we do this for the enemy because the computer is going to select the attack. For the player, we just set the battle menu on and we wait for with our on click listener. And the other part of this is we want to go to the next turn. Right. Save all of that. All right. While we're at it, yeah. While we're at it, let's I'm scroll up. Just do some. Oh, checking. Uh, let's put a semicolon here. Oh, I'm repeating myself though. Wonder how this happened. I'll get rid of that. And then let's see. Just a quick scan through to make sure. Oh, sure, we got what we need. Oh, here we are. Let's fix this guy too. Okay. Let's save all that and give it a run. Looking good. Let's check the council. Okay. Has not been assigned. Oh, of course, of course. And let's go then to game controller object. And I'm actually going to put this up here and battle menu. And the battle menu will be the. We can do it the easier way, I guess. Action menu. Boom. There we are. And so this is working correctly, right? Because now that this has disappeared, it isn't the hero's turn. Remember, a hero stat has a short, has a, is less, is not as fast as the enemy. So the enemy goes first. Obviously, the enemy didn't swing, probably because of this. And this being the victim. So in the next episode, we will take care of that. We'll do a bit more debugging and we will have a fully functioning, working, fancy, beautiful game.